What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Today, we're chatting with David Locke from Locked On Jazz as the Utah Jazz eke out an important win in game four against the Dallas Mavericks. Can they carry that momentum into the pivotal game five of this series in the Western Conference first round? But first, a quick message from our friends over at Built Bar, because when it comes to protein bars, you've got to check out Built Bar. They're the number one protein bar on the market. They've got so many incredible flavors to choose from. Raspberry, strawberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel, mint brownie, peanut butter, my personal favorite, coconut brownie chunk, the goat Built Bar out of all their flavors. You, But really, you can't go wrong with a single flavor on their menu. Every single bar is low-cal, low sugar, high protein, high fiber. Every bar coated in 100% delicious chocolate. They're not gritty or chalky like other protein bars that you'll find out there on the market. And you can check them out. Just go to built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your very next order of the best tasting protein bars on the market. Again, that's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Joining us now is, of course, our fearless leader, David Locke, host of the Locked On Jazz podcast. You can follow him on Twitter at DLock09. Now, David, the Jazz evening the series two games apiece in a decisive game four coming down to the wire off of a you know final possession. Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, game-winning bucket. Just in the return of Luka Doncic, though, in this game four, how were the Jazz able to withstand the the 30 point 10 rebound performance in Luca's return to action and able to eke out the win evening this this series two games apiece? Well, first off, on behalf of every Utah Jazz fan who's on Twitter, I do not approve of the shirt over your right shoulder. <laughs> the Vernon oh. Maxwell hate toward Utah must be recognized in this conversation. Um, so first off, the Jazz just played a lot harder. Led by Boyan Bogdanovich, who picked up 94 feet. According to the post-game conversations, they had decided to make the defensive switch, which was Boyan guarding Brunson and Boyan guarding Doncic. But they D- Boyan did not tell his teammates that he planned to pick up at 94 feet. And that set a tone for them that if he was going to go that hard, they all had to. And frankly, that's a great read by Boyan, who's this very quiet, stoic, all black clad wearing uh, kind of, you know, European who very rarely changes effect at all until he launches like the largest fist pumps of anyone in the NBA when he buries a big shot. And so for him to come through and kind of bring that tenacity, I think changed the feeling of the jazz throughout the whole game. The other thing is that when the Mavericks made their run, um, they really withstood it well. They they handled it very very well. They they made the, then made the plays late. They frankly were seemed dead to rights when Luca hit a three late, um, and then everything went their way. But when everything went their way, they took advantage of every step of it. Now throughout the playoffs so far, David, the Jazz the Jazz were the number ten defense in the association throughout the regular season. They've slipped a bit. They allowed 110 points per possession. Uh, throughout the regular season, but here in the playoffs so far, 117.6 points per possession. That's good enough for a bottom five defense here so far in the playoffs. How much of Utah's defense? Wait, somebody's defense has been worse? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Uh, wow. I mean, only only a handful of teams. It's not that many, but a few. How much of the struggles so far in the playoffs that the Jazz are facing have to do with what they're doing You know, possibly wrong versus what the Mavericks are exploiting and doing well offensively? So I think there's a misnomer about the Mavericks. I mean, they're 18 and five since they added Spencer Dinwiddie and then Jalen Brunson's in the 93rd or fourth percentile in pick and roll and about the 70th percentile in isolation and really just incredible footwork. You know, some of the best footwork I've ever seen in the paint. Spencer Dinwiddie's a 90% isolation player, though he's not having a particularly good series. So while they were without Luka, it was the guys that were, doing what they were doing were good at it. And then they just changed the way they played. They they ran about – they regularly run 20 isolations a game. They're running 35. And, and the Jazz don't have guys who can guard on the perimeter. I mean, they just don't have anyone who can. And so they just were getting downhill on the Jazz. And then when Rudy Gobert came to help, then they were kicking out and the Jazz rotations um, weren't as good. And the other thing is that the Mavericks, who had the slowest pace of play, were playing in transition a great deal. And they got a bunch of threes in transition. Simultaneously, the Mavericks deserve a huge amount of credit for just completely taking the Jazz out of what they do. The Jazz were not shooting threes. They were not getting out in the open court. They were not doing any of the things that they do on the offensive end either. And I think that 
took away and they got very kind of one dimensional and one on one almost selfish play. And I think that had a negative impact on them defensively. But the bottom line is that Mike Conley is having a really hard time guarding Jalen Brunson. Like that's just not a matchup that's good for the Jazz right now. Um, and they didn't run it as much when Luka Doncic was on the floor. So far this series, David, Donovan Mitchell is putting up some some really solid numbers. He's had three 30-point performances, the most recent one, a 23-point outing. But the efficiency has just not really been there so far. Are you okay with the looks that he's getting to this point in the series? Or would you rather see him be a bit more selective about his shot profile moving forward in these, these next few games? The Jazz, who used to throw 300 passes a game, threw 225 passes in game two of this series. They really stopped with ball movement. Um, I haven't looked at the number for game four yet. I would guess it's back up to watching that game to about 265, 270 um, on the amount of passes. I could be wrong. Sometimes that number really surprises you on how few it actually was. But I think the Jazz just need the ball to move a little bit more. I actually think if you isolate every single one of Donovan Mitchell's shots, you'd say, oh, that's actually a pretty good shot. Oh, that's a pretty good shot. That's But the problem with it is too many of those shots are coming without any ball movement. And this team needs to have more ball movement to be successful than what it's been having. On the other side of the Utah Jazz backcourt, Mike Conley, his play through this series, I'm just going to say it, it's been rough, to, to put it lightly. What's been the biggest issue that you're seeing with him specifically in this series? Does it kind of go back to the same point you just made about the, the lack of ball movement and continuity within the Jazz's offense? So, I mean, I think... You know, matchups are all different in different ways, right? In some weird way, if the Jazz were playing the Warriors, we probably wouldn't be saying this about Mike Conley. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson aren't going to put their head down and just drive on him isolation the way Jalen Brunson is. And that's a very, very difficult matchup. I think Brunson was 7 of 9 in the regular season. I think he's about 9 of 13 shooting when guarded by um, Mike in the playoffs. I don't, I don't have the updated numbers for this for after game four yet. Um, but he... So defensively, it's just a really, really hard matchup for him. And then offensively, they're switching everything. And he is the number one off-the-bounce three-point shooter in the NBA. And those looks aren't available if people are aggressively switching. So sometimes in playoff series, um, you can make a lot of mistakes, both good and bad, in your analysis of players. Ask Isaiah Thomas, who signed Jerome James after one good playoff series when he was a GM. So with with that, David, looking at kind of how we've gone through these first four games of the series, who to you is is maybe the the unsung hero for the Jazz so far in this series? No question, it's Boyan Bogdanovich. What Boyan Bogdanovich did in that, um, really, the way he played that game uh, for and brought the tenacity and brought the crowd back into it, he's unquestionably the guy that changed the way this this uh, series feels. We've got game five on the horizon between these two teams, and it's going to be a, a kind of a pivotal game five, as, as most game fives are when the season is tied up, you know, two games apiece. What are some of your keys moving into this, you know, very, very important game five for the Utah Jazz? Well, I mean, first is tenacity. The Jazz just didn't play particularly well in game two or play particularly hard. So do they have energy? You know, we're playing three games in five nights all of a sudden in this series in three different cities. You know, or, you know, in three non-consecutive cities. I think fatigue is actually going to be a large part of this. I don't know how that's going to impact things. Is Luka fatigued on his second game back? That's always the hardest for players. Dinwiddie and Bullock lead the league in minutes played. That's always hard. But Donovan's been much better with rest than not rest this year. Um, so I think there's a fatigue factor that plays in this game that early on is worth keeping an eye on. Um, then I think the ball movement, the things I've talked about, ball movement and just overall effort by the Jazz, are going to be vital. And and then the final one is, is anyone just going to have a game? And maybe Jordan Clarkson had it the other day. But in a seven-game series, there's usually one or two games, and, and Maxi Kleba might have been the guy who had that game for, for Dallas in game two, where somebody just has a game, and you're like, okay, well, that just happens. The Jazz, if they're going to win this series, needs somebody to have a game. Can the Utah Jazz take control of the series with a crucial win here in Game 5? Of course, you'll have us covered for all of that and more over at Locked on Jazz. David, appreciate you stopping by Locked on NBA with me. Thanks, Jackson.